Hey you guy from New Plastic and for the first time on this channel we'll jump into Redshift. I noticed that no one is talking about this physically accurate metal in Redshift so I decided to share this method with all you Redshift users. Before we jump into it I just completely upgraded my procedural metal pack and made a Redshift version as well. So whether you are a Redshift or an Octane user, this procedural metal pack will provide you with 12 different metals. Each metal has between 5 and 7 different versions from clean, dirty, scratch, to patina, tarnish, rust and more. Overall around 60 materials, all 100% procedural, fully customizable, infinitely tileable and fit for any resolution. If you feel like you need it, go onto my Gumroad and get yourself one, link in the description. Feel free to check out my prints and enamel pins on my other Gumroad if you're just looking for some cool art I made. It's a great way to support the channel and if you want to support even more feel free to check out my Patreon or membership where you can get these project files, free products and other cool perks but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram at ojang or the channel at brand new plastic. Subscribe, comment, share, bell. Start learning a new language I'm telling you. Let's go. So I got this redshift scene here. Let's add both the regular material and the standard material just to see how it can be done in both. So in the regular material, we'll go to the reflection section, first off change BRDF mode to GGX and then change IOR type to IOR advanced. This will break the IOR into three red, green and blue channels with two value inputs for each. The top is the refractive index value and the bottom is the extinction coefficient value. We'll talk about these in a minute. And in the standard material, the reflection section is slightly different. BRDF mode is set to GGX by default and you can't change it as far as I know. And there's no way to change the IOR type as well. To do that, I'll hit C and in the node search, I'll type IOR and add this IOR to metal tints node. Connect the facing to the color channel and the edge tint to the reflection color channel. And you can see that this node gives us the ability to change the IOR for each RGB channel as well. Cool, so what do we put in those IOR channels? The answer is in this website, refractiveindex.info. I'll leave the link in the description. In the shelf, we'll select 3D. In the book menu, we'll make sure metals is selected and then just choose the metal you want. This gives us only pure metals and no metal alloys. But once we understand how this works, we can take some creative liberties and fake those looks ourselves. So let's say we select gold. Now we need to input the wavelength for each of the RGB channels. There's nothing about it in the Redshift manual as far as I know, but the Octane manual does tell us and it works the same way as it does in Redshift. So the red channel's wavelength is 0.65 micrometers, green is 0.55 and blue is 0.45. Let's start with the red channel. I'll type in 0.65 and I'll get the refractive index and the extinction coefficient value for this wavelength. I'll copy the end value and paste it into this first top part of the red channel. Then copy the K value and paste it into the bottom part of the red channel. Easy. Now I'll just need to type the 0.55 wavelength and copy these values into the green channel IOR and then type 0.45 and copy these values into the blue channel IOR. And once we did that, one thing I forgot is to turn the metal nest channel all the way up and that's it. We've got the most physically accurate gold reflection Redshift can get. Now look, this is still just a simulation, so don't feel like you're married to these numbers. If the gold feels too yellow or too saturated for you, feel free to play with these numbers. For example, if I up the end value on the red channel, it'll start to be a bit more green. And if I up the green channel, it starts to be more red. And if I up the K value of the blue channel, it kind of desaturates it. So you can use these values as a starting point and change the values very slightly to nail the look. And once you're happy, you can just save this material in your asset browser. And whenever you need a gold material, just use it out of your asset browser so you don't need to redo this every time. But let's take it a step further and add some procedural imperfections because what do you think we're going to do on this channel? Let's zoom in here so we can see the details better. I'll press C and add a maxin noise and duplicate it a few times. Let's add a colored layer node to combine them all. Let's add a bump node, plug the color layer to it and plug it into the bump channel. And let's solo this color layer node and disable layer one so we can just see the base layer with this noise. Let's scale it down. And uh, which noise type? Let's do FBM. Let's up the octaves and lower the lacunarity or however you say it, just a bit. So we're not getting so much detail on the noise. Maybe lower the contrast a bit. Okay, hmm. let's add a ramp node to this first noise. Make the black much brighter. 
And let's plug this second noise to layer 1 using a UV projection node. Let's turn layer 1 on. Scale the noise down. And let's lower the X scale to stretch it. And I'll duplicate this noise and plug it into the color 1 of this noise. So you can see we replaced a black color with this noise. So we're basically breaking the noise even further. Let's scale down this noise too. Up the octaves. Up the low clip to choke in the blacks. And we can play with the scale and noise type till we get a pattern we like. This seems okay. Now I'll duplicate this UV projection node and plug the same noise to it. Plug it into layer 2. Turn on layer 2. Let's change both to multiply blend mode. And now in this second UV projection node, I'll rotate this layer. So you can see by using two UV projection nodes, I'm getting two different noise layers out of only one noise node, which is really great for saving resources. And I can play with the scale of the second noise as well if I want to. Awesome. Let's plug this last noise here to layer three. Enable it. Scale the noise down. Change the type to Voronoi 3. And let's, uh, now nah, we'll leave these as is. We can play with the exponent and you can see by upping it, we're slightly distorting the lines, which is great. And I'll plug this noise to color one here as well to break up these lines even further and actually use a ramp node for it. Choke the notches in a bit and use another ramp node before going into the color layer. And here I'll choke the whites in a whole lot to really thin out the black lines. Let's change blend mode to subtract maybe. Mm, that's a pretty cool look, but now nah, let's keep it at multiply so all the lines stay black. Let's choke the whites even more on this second ramp to thin out the blacks. And choke the blacks in on the first ramp to reveal more of the blacks. Okay, let's see how we're looking. Looking nice, but the bump is way too strong overall, so let's lower the height on the bump node. 0.1 is still a bit strong. 0.05. This looks very rough still, but it looks good. Depends on the look you're going for. I want these scratches to be very, very fine, so I'll lower the opacity of these layers in the color layer node. Nice. Mm, maybe scale down this fourth noise even more. Yeah, that's nice. Let's actually duplicate this noise and use it as the masking noise. I'll test out different noise types. And the point here is that I'm overlaying a very similar scale of noise, so the breakup pattern fits the original noise better. Cranal seems fine, and maybe just stretch it a tiny bit. Okay, this is sick, looks great. This directional noise seems too stretched out here, so maybe we can scale it down slightly on the Y and Z axis to make it less stretched out. Yeah, much better. And let's lower the bump height even more. Yeah, it's so subtle, but still very, very effective. Don't be afraid to push the bump height way, way down. Even if you're going for a very clean look, there are always minuscule imperfections on pretty much any surface. Okay, let's move this whole thing down. Add an add mix node. Plug the color layer to the bottom layer. And let's use this noise. Yeah, this large one. Plug it into the wire router node, which uh, I love this so much. Makes the noise system so much cleaner. Plug it into layer 1 of the add node. Plug it into the roughness channel. And let's solo it. Let's add a ramp node here. Invert the notches. And choke the blacks in. Maybe the other way. Make the white more grayish. Cool, and let's add another ramp node to the color layer. Invert the notches so the tiny scratches are white. And maybe not full white. Cool, now the scratches areas will have a rougher reflection. And let's add a UV projection node to this top layer and rotate it just so it won't sit perfectly over the original noise. 
Let's solo this ramp and damn, okay, it's all black. Let's pull the black notch back and the UV projection is stretching the noise. So let's change the space to object. Nice, and let's invert the notches to something like this. Cool, maybe darken the white. And this looks good. Nice, very subtle but effective. We can brighten or darken the whites to change the strength of the roughness patches. And for even more control, we can plug this add node to a color correction node and add a value node to the level scale. And this is basically a float value that we can use to brighten or darken this whole thing so we can easily make the roughness channel stronger or weaker. Really cool. Okay, I actually want to change the projection on these projection nodes to object so they really won't stretch on the sides of the model. Much better. And we can even add another ramp node here to increase the contrast and thin out the black lines so the scratches will be even finer. Yeah, you see now we're getting these really ultra fine scratches. Maybe increase the roughness slightly. Man, this is awesome. I love the subtlety. And of course, if you're looking for a more scuffed look, just increase the bump height and the roughness brightness. Let's zoom in here and we can push it even more by reducing the opacity of these scratch layers. And now we're getting a barely scuffed look. Like this would be the look after you clean up the gold piece really well, but you didn't buff out the tiny scratches. So it's clean, but not perfectly smooth. And just to spice it up even more, let's duplicate this stretch noise layer into layer four. Scale it up and make it just a bit less stretchy. Add a ramp node and choke the whites. And play with the notches and the low high clipping on the noise till we get these sparse thin lines. Something like this. Maybe a different noise type. Cool. Let's enable layer 4. Change blend mode to multiply, lower the opacity, and now we're getting these occasional larger scratches. And you can play with the rotation, the noise type, but yeah, super effective. I love it. That's it. I'm really just starting out with Redshift, so it's cool to implement some of the procedural techniques I use in Octane here. Most of everything is following the same rules, but every engine has their own personality and it's cool to get to know other engines. But man, some stuff in Redshift, I just don't get. I really hope they improve some aspects of this engine fast, like adding a ton more nodes, fixing this whole stupid sampling system they have, like why make it so confusing? Octane is so much simpler when it comes to render settings and still renders much faster. Eh, whatever, I don't want to get into it, maybe I'll make a whole video about it once I really have more experience with Redshift. Until then, get the procedural metal pack from my Gumroad, check out the prints and pins from my other Gumroad, consider supporting on Patreon and my horns raised up to all my beautiful metalheads, Yin and Gong, Guillaume Lopez, Dave Toro, Marie Robbins, Svoyas Chari, Eric Hu, Daniel Larry, Minky Kim, Adder, Leo, Peter Rodiger, Shin Yunji, Chris Hyde, Alda Boyd, Perong Ferong, Katie Royal, Derek Fredrickson, Vico Sun, Ruby Nine, Lucas Ranche, Tell Me More, Juskirat Pandrath, Bori, Jing Kwan Wu, Bruno Arredondo, Domestic God in the House, Toby T, Arid Ali, David Lesser, Adam Trexler, Everyday Swiss, Seamus Johnson, General Zods, Kevin Boliu, Colin, Amir Bahadur Ashrafzadeh, Simon Sturm, Mr. Hoptaz, Sebastian Reuter, Henriette Marijan Glickstein, 3D Monkey Biz, Aryaman Munish, Arlen, Suki Violet Su, The 22 Design, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desole, Derek Schultz, Marie Sickendorf, The Studio Image, Matus Strutisajewski, Blue Hamel, Mark Cragen, Joshua Akoy, Punxsacornim Siri, Webb, Kong Idiot, Maddie de Gualdre, Cho Yun John, NZE, IEMN, Colfino666, Ali Esser, Leandro Merriman, May, Balgasm, Shane, Harry Cooper, Hannah Kazeka, Oisin O'Brien, Joel Taylor, Paul Major, Kevin E. Quintero, Jeremy Bajana, Christina, Yatsu, Raquel Vela, Ezekiel Grand, Alex Jean Yong Cho, 
Matessa Arcozzi, Onur Koroglu, Takuki Chiba, Pablo Ritter, Sophia Wilton, David Hughes, Kim Jae, Riverstar 2190, LSD Honey, Monsef Canada, Alice Saturnus, Hugo Esconde, Ozan Shahin, Sina, The Rusted Pixel, Alexandra Olduk, Adar Shnegi, Aaron, and everybody else on the list. Thank you so much. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.